Watching Ahmad Jamal is always a treat. Uh, listening to him is, is the ultimate treat because Ahmad Jamal tampers with time and space unlike any other pianist. What you hear in Ahmad's playing is his breath. You hear the breathing in between the phrases, his body realigning, his making notes, making uh, new choices, and then you hear the next exploration. So they come in bursts. They're always unexpected. You're not sure of when he's gonna be really simple or when he's going to be totally virtuous. And that flexibility in a pianist is very rare. I first heard Ahmad's music growing up in Houston. Uh, my parents loved his music, so they often played Poinciana for us, uh, my brothers and I, and something about hearing that groove. But at the same time I was hearing that song from my parents, I was also hearing his music sampled by hip hop artists as well. So if you heard a track by Common, you might hear Ahmad Jamal playing piano. And somehow that was helped me understand his excellence, that he spoke to many generations, clearly. That his sensibility and his groove was for, kind of like for the ages rather than for one age. And my mother and I went to see Ahmad Jamal and I watched the best concert of my life in that moment. Uh, uh, a quartet where he seemed in such control from every gesture his hand made. Um, never with any eye contact, uh, but just with the sound. One of Ahmad's seminal recordings is called Live at the Persian, uh, and it's recorded live in front of an audience. And you hear Ahmad and his trio with piano, bass, and drums moving through a series of standards, but putting an indelible mark on them that let you know that you're hearing to a specific group, kind of like, you know, a great orchestra. Because the way Ahmad sits at the piano is not simply as a pianist, he's there kind of telling when the woodwinds to come in, when the brass comes, when the strings come in. And he's turning the corners very quickly too. Uh, and on that record is that famous song, Poinciana, with the, the groove of the century, possibly. <laughs> uh, and the way he evolves the melody, chorus after chorus the way the bass line erupts as like some kind of ostinato that, that you know, like continues to help the earth uh, rotate. It's as important a record as Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. And Miles Davis often referred to Ahmad Jamal uh, because Miles wanted to attain the, the kind of space that Ahmad Jamal used in his music. So there would be these gaps, and the gaps felt like they felt long, you know, these spaces for contemplation that Ahmad uses. And Miles was totally intrigued by that and often went to see the band to try to gain some knowledge of how Ahmad uses space. Uh, a pianist's style is their language, first and foremost. It's, it's the slang they've grown up with. It's how the front door used to slam. <laughs> you know, like it's all those things that come into then what I call the touch. Um, but when I hear Ahmad, the thing that, that resonates, the thing I aspire to is this crystalline touch, you know? But also at the very same time that he's kind of like giving you all the sunlight up in the right hand, when he descends into the left hand, it's total thunder. It's a phenomenon, um, it's, a, it's a style, but it's also, most importantly, it's, it's an openness uh, that we hear in that music. And he allows us, the listener, to digest, just as he is, and so we all feel a part of the process. Mm -hmm.